What's good, Faithful? You're watching the 49ers Report. I am Chase Sr. Hope all of you are doing just fine on today's show. Another fine show where I take all of your great questions from our loyal subscribers right here on the 49ers Report on YouTube as well as Rumble. So without further ado, let's dive into these questions right now. We kick it off with positive energy. He says this, how do you envision the running back rotation? I'm an Ohio State fan, and I hope Trey Sermon can produce. I agree. I think that Trey Sermon and his roster spot is not guaranteed. I also think that Trey Sermon could be a viable trade candidate if he gets beat out and if another team wants to trade away a sixth or seventh round pick for Trey Sermon. Now, that would be problematic because you took Sermon in the third round, but if Ty Davis Price works out, then it doesn't really matter. If I'm calling the shots, I'm going with all of the young guys. I'm going Elijah Mitchell, Ty Davis Price, and Trey Sermon. If I have an opportunity to bring in a fourth running back on their 53-man roster, because some teams only do carry three, it's going to be a competition between Jeff Wilson and Jamichael Hasty. Honestly, I don't have much of a preference between the two. I think that all of them are going to be able to produce in Kyle Shanahan's offense because any running back that's in this offense ends up playing well. Del G, next up. Who do you have for the offensive line starting? So Trent Williams at left tackle. At right tackle, I guess I'll go Mike McGlinchey. At center, if Alex Mack doesn't retire, he'll start there. Daniel Brunskill at right guard. And maybe Aaron Banks at left guard. Jalen Moore can play guard as well. You drafted Spencer Burford. Uh, he could start. Uh, man, it's tough. I mean, you look at the line right now, there are so many question marks, which is a little bit of a concern because we're not sure if Alex Mack's going to come back, what the health of Mike McGlinchey is going to be, who's going to play right guard, who's going to play left guard. All we really know right now is that Trent Williams is the best left tackle in the game, and he's going to be protecting Trey Lance's blind side or maybe Jimmy Garoppolo. I'd be shocked if it's Garoppolo. OJG, can Jason Poe reach Trent Williams' level he has similar attributes. He doesn't because he's not a tackle. He is a center and a guard. Now, from an athletic freak standpoint, Jason Poe on pool blocks, him out in space, he's freaky, man. I mean, some teams heading into the NFL draft wanted to work him out as a fullback, and we're talking about a guy who's well over 300 pounds. That's how well he moves. So I can't really compare him to Trent Williams because they play different positions. Trent Williams is one of one. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's the best left tackle in the game. I think Jason Poe has an opportunity to crack the roster as an undrafted free agent, if not a practice squad guy in year one. Him and Donovan West both UDFAs who I'm really, really intrigued with. I want to challenge you with this question right now. I want you to get into the comments section and predict Trey Lance's touchdown-to-interception ratio in 2022. For example, if he throws for 25 touchdowns and 10 picks, that is his touchdown ratio. So use the formula down below, go back to school as we're talking about formulas and predict Trey Lance's touchdown-to-interception ratio in the comments section right now. Ernestine Ware, do you think it would be wise to add Julio Jones or even Jarvis Landry? If I were to pick one of them, it would be Julio Jones because I think he can play that X receiver spot on the outside, and I think that he'd actually be able to play somewhat well because a lot of the focus would be on Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. The problem with Julio is... He's been off injured the last couple of years. Now, I still think that he can produce at a decent level, but I like him better because he's an outside wide receiver. Jarvis Landry is more in the slot, and I think that Landry would be paid a little bit more. So give me Julio over Jarvis Landry. Haroon Razak, do you think that these reports about Lance are complete bogus? I do. Uh, because I don't think there's much merit to them, and I don't think that a lot of these reports make a lot of sense, right? It's coming from a guy who doesn't cover the Niners, who wasn't at training camp last year when Trey Lance completed 70% of his passes, which was better than Garoppolo. The concerns about his arm strength don't make sense, because if Trey Lance has to work on one thing with his arm strength, it's throwing the ball lighter than it is harder. He throws the ball with zip. I think his arm strength reminds me a little bit of a Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Now, the motion is certainly a little bit clunky, and I do have some concerns about that, but Trey Lance was playing great in training camp. He did some really nice things in the preseason, and his two starts, I thought he grew within those starts, so I do think that they are bogus for sure. 
Matt S., how do you think that Debo's attitude will be playing with us this year? I think it'll be fine as long as he gets paid. If he doesn't get paid, I think he's going to be a disgruntled wide receiver. If he doesn't get paid, I think he still might play because he has a base salary of $3.9 million. And in California, that ain't all that much. If you get fined, that's really denting your wallet. If you pay him, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, Debo Samuel is a guy who's said to absolutely love football. He puts in a lot of work. He cares about his craft. He's always in the lab. He's been putting in that work and grinding all throughout the offseason. And he's also been said to be a good character guy as well. So I think he just wants money. He saw the wide receiver market exploding. He wants to be a part of that. Debo Samuel is an elite player. And with him on this team, he helped the Niners become an elite team last year. Do you consider the Niners to be an elite team? Let me know down below. E for elite. A for average, I look at it one of two ways. You're either elite or you're average. I don't think the Niners are bad, so give me an E or give me an A. If you want a 49ers jersey with the 2022 season quickly approaching, get one right now by going to chatsports.com slash 49 jersey. Because it's the offseason, because it's the summertime, some of the deals on these jerseys, they're crazy. I can't even believe them. Some of them are very, very cheap. Basically, any player that you'd want a jersey of available right now, if you use that link at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash 49 jersey, all colors available too. You can go scarlet red, black and red jerseys, white jerseys, the classic Joe Montana, three stripes on the sleeve, which is returning this year. You want a Jerry Rice jersey to honor the GOAT, you can do that too. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. Yasir Jamil, how do you compare Womack to DJ Reed and K1 Williams? Womack is being talked about a lot this week for from other sources. And we've talked about him a lot too. Uh, the draft evaluation breakdown that we did on him did like 13,000 views. I called him a ball-hawking cornerback. He's a little bit too short to play on the outside, but in the slot, I think that he could be the next K1 Williams, maybe the next DJ Reed. What impressed me the most about Womack is, yes, I understand that he played at Toledo, but he played 51 career games. I like the experience there, and he produced 46 pass breakups. You can't teach putting your hands on the football, having good instincts, breaking off routes, breaking toward wide receivers, and just making plays on the ball. That's what Womack brings to the table. So I like Samuel Womack. I think he can be a really good player. I think he could be a future K1 Williams. I honestly think that Womack and Tariq Castro-Fields, with where the Niners got him, could end up being impact players for this organization for a long time. Atachi Productions, next up. Who do you, or what do you think Debo's new extension will be if he stays? So Tyree Kill's making $30 million per year. I'm not sure if Debo's going to surpass him with that. I think that Debo could make anywhere between 25 and 28 mil. A.J. Brown's new extension pays him annually once the contract extension kicks in at about $25 million per if you're just solely looking at that contract. Now, the numbers get affected because he's still going into the final year of his rookie deal just like Debo is. But I think from an average annual value perspective, let's say 25 to 27 guaranteed money, it could really be anywhere between like 50 and 60 total years, I'd like the Niners to sign him to a four or five year deal. That's kind of my contract projection for him. If you have your notifications on, first of all, thank you. If you don't, you should put them on. Why? Anytime we go live, anytime we publish a video, you'll be notified. And when you do turn on your noties, make sure you select all. Therefore, you're getting the notifications for videos that we just produce or our live shows breaking news videos and all of that and make sure you subscribe to the channel as we get closer and closer to 60,000 subs why big jordan i know you saw those week one rumors is jimmy starting no i don't think he's gonna start man i really don't think he's gonna start i think it's gonna be trey lance i think that garoppolo his time as a starter with san francisco is over unless trey lance gets injured or unless he completely shits the bed Faithful 69, nice. Do you think the Niners will win 10 games? That's my prediction as of right now. They won 10 last year. I think they win 10 once again. I do think the offense is going to be better. I think the offense could be a little bit more explosive. 
But I do think that there are going to be some growing pains with Trey Lance. Why? He's inexperienced. He's made two career starts. Kid's only 22. Youngest starter in the NFL. If he ends up being a starter, I think defensively they're going to be really good. I think offensively they're going to be explosive. Ten games, ten wins. It's going to be pretty solid. Void Q. Sign Odell Beckham Jr. and let go of Jalen Hurd. Well, Hurd is not on this roster anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. Did not appear in a single game in three seasons. Only played two preseason games throughout his entire career after being a third-round pick out of Baylor. Uh, as for signing OBJ, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, you have Debo, you have Brandon Ayuk, you have Ray Ray McLeod, you drafted Danny Gray. Uh, you have Jawan Jennings. I think the Niners are somewhat set at that receiver spot. Now, would you have OBJ over Jawan Jennings in the slot? Yeah, of course you would because OBJ is the better player. I do like what Jawan Jennings was able to bring this football team last year. He's a guy who, as a former seventh-round pick, has been able to nicely develop. He was awesome on the money downs last year, came through in the clutch on third and fourth downs. So I'd like to see more from him. He signed that... Uh, like restricted free agency tag. So he's back for a pretty affordable price and you could really get him at an excellent value. Appreciate all of you for getting those questions in during our mailbag. If I missed any of your questions, feel free to reach out to me on both of my social media pages at Chase underscore senior. I made it really easy for all of you. It's the same handle on both social media platforms. Feel free to mention me, to DM me. I know things can certainly get crowded in the DMs. I try to respond to as many as possible, but at the end of the day, I love chopping it up, talking Niners football and interacting with all of you. We have a family here at Chat Sports of nearly 60,000 subs, and that family, it is certainly prevalent on social media as well. So feel free to give me a follow at Chase underscore senior. Thank you in advance. Cannot wait to interact with all of you on the internet.